Hi everyone and welcome back to Monday's Nail of the Week. Stay tuned to see what I chose for this week's spring look. It's so girly and cute. Welcome everyone, great to see you and great to be back in doing another Nail of the Week design. It's Monday, a fresh new week, and we all woke up this morning, so praise God for that. And wait till you see this adorable, cute, girly nail design. Check it out. Aren't those so precious and girly? I love them. They're called the one stroke flowers is what I did. You'll see in the video if you haven't never heard of that or don't know how to do it. I show you in there. I do need to get a new brush though. My brush is old. When it's new, it really works a lot better to do the one stroke, but they still turned out beautiful. I love them. They are so girly and so beautiful. And of course you see it even better when you've seen the photo. It shows the true brightness of them. They are a neon color. Maybe I could turn this light a little bit so you can see but just so girly, I love them. And they just are perfect, exactly what I wanted. And I can't wait to share the Fashion Friday with you guys again. Of course, this one's gonna be a more girly, cute look. I'm excited to share that with you guys. But before we go on, we're gonna read our prayers and promises for comfort and encouragement. And this one's a really great one. I love, well, I love them all. Like, I, I just can't decide which one I like more, but they're all so great. Like each one just gets better as I go along. And this one's on compassion, okay? It says, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. 1 Corinthians 9.22. That's amazing and just wonderful. And I do. I want to try to help everybody come to the Lord. That is my goal. Um, another one is Psalms 51.1 is, God, I have mercy on my according, or God, have mercy on me according to your faithful love. Because your love is so tender and kind, wipe out my lawless acts. You know, you can ask God to do that. You know, we make a lot of mistakes in our life and God is so tender and so loving and we want to be like that. Of course, we can't love as wonderful as God does, but we, you know, surely can try. So do seek that out and ask God to help you. Um, the sec uh, last one is 2 Corinthians 1, 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. And he truly is. He is the God of all compassion. He doesn't want us to hurt or suffer or fear. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to suffer with anything. He always wants us to be happy and overjoyed. So just, like I said, read your Bible and you'll see that that God just loves us eternally and wants each and every one of us to follow him and be with him and just wants to make us feel good every day. The other side says, Father, you saw my suffering and my dejection and you had compassion on me. You intervened on my behalf, forgave me and remade me. Then you asked me to extend and extend the same grace to others. And I feel like that's what God did to me. I have always been a Christian, like I said, I've always walked with God, but not as much as I have lately. But God just came in right at the right moment when I needed him the most, when the, all of this virus stuff started, it would have freaked me out. But God came at the right time. And now he wants me to, you know, extend my grace to others. And that's why I'm doing that. That's why I'm sharing the good word, you know, of him to you guys. I want all of you guys to feel the same way I feel every day and be thankful for your life and to be happy and to not be afraid and to not fear. I just want you to live a happy life. Uh, then it says, may the compassion I have been given be the overflow that I pour out on others. The realization of your love towards me will feel my grace towards others who may at times be difficult to love. 
they are as much in need of compassion as I am. And I do speak of that, like, especially our enemies. You know, you want to love them as much as you can, and you want no harm to come upon them. And obviously, if they are an enemy or they don't like you, they're not liking their life. That's the problem. They're not happy in their life. And so we want to pray for them, for them to be happy in their life. And I definitely want you guys to do that. Don't turn against your enemies. No, you don't have to be their best friend. But pray for them daily and love them and ask God to be with them and, you know, share that same joy. Ask God to give them the joy that you feel. You know, you don't want them to feel bad. They're an enemy because they have a jealousy towards you or because they are hurting in their life and that's why they become an enemy. Now, I'm not claiming, you know, I have enemies, but I'm sure I do. Uh, everybody does. The devil likes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he will send people in your life that will turn against you and not love you. Um, but you want to have compassion for them too. So love everybody. Love even thy enemy. That's what will give you more joy. When you're loving a person that, you know, doesn't love you back, gives you more joy than loving somebody that loves you. You know, what joy do you get out of that? You get more joy when you're loving somebody that doesn't love you. You know, you will feel a lot better inside. The last thing it says is how can you be more compassionate how can you be a more compassionate person? And I know that I can. I know that I can definitely grow even more compassionate to others. I believe the way I can do it is continuing to, you know, teach good stuff to you guys, to pray more for that compassion. I can ask God to give me more compassion and more love for others. I know that I do love big, but I know that I can love even bigger because if God can love as big as he can, I know that we can grow our love bigger and bigger. So I, I would say praying, praying to God to ask for more compassion, you know, and more love for others. That's what I would say that I would ask. God to help me with. Like I always tell you guys, start the day. Go through your day and end your day with God. Spend time alone in a prayer room, uh, writing scripture down, reading scripture, uh, sharing the good word with a lot of people, as many people as you can. We need to help everybody come to the Lord and it's our job as Christians to do that. So like I always say, please, you know, keep that faith. Don't be afraid don't be afraid of God. Never be ashamed of God. If you're ashamed of God, he'll be ashamed of you. So don't be ashamed of him. Preach that good word and tell the world about it. And today uh, could have been a more better day. Um, I heard what President Trump had said about all the churches are open, um, that, you know, it should have never been a place of, you know, that they closed. It should have been an, an essential uh, place to go because many people want to be able to be into the house of God and pray. I mean, you got the blood of Jesus on you in there. Ain't nothing going to hurt you. And all of your pastors will have compassion and keep things clean. I know we are returning back to church and I'm just excited about it. But I dropped to my knees today when I heard President Trump say that, that it's not fair that they'll keep open, um, you know, uh, abortion clinics and uh, um, liquor stores. They were essential, but God wasn't. That was definitely the work of the devil. So Thank you, God, and thank you, President Trump, for saying what you did and opening up all the churches. We all need to be in the house of God. Remember that. We need to be there. And everything will be fine, especially when you're in the house of God. I actually am inviting a neighbor with me, too, and I'm so glad that she's going to come with. Um, I invite all of you guys, get back into church. Your church is open now, so if your church is open, if they did open it, get back into church. That's where you need to be. God's always going to be with you. He's going to keep you. That's going to be the safest place to be. Definitely the safest place to be. So, anyways, this design. Don't want to sit and talk so much, but I, I could talk all day about God. I really could. So, I hope that's okay with you guys. But anyways, this design. I love the way it turned out. I love the girliness of it. I love how cute it is. Uh, there's going to be a toe design that will match. And of course, Fashion Friday's outfit of the day. I hope all of you guys are staying safe, happy, and healthy. I pray for each and every one of you always. And if you're new to my channel, right there is my red subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you're notified of all of my new uploads. Share around my channel. Uh, I'm going to do the thumbs up. Share around my channel so I can grow bigger and bigger and help many people with the Lord and with the keto since I teach the keto diet. And definitely shoot me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this adorable, cute, cute nail design of the week for spring. I love the way it turned out. I love you all so much. God bless. Take care. And I will see each and every one of you in my very next upload. Now, on to this adorable one-stroke flower look. Hi everyone! So here's what I chose to go with for this week's spring look. More of a girly look. We went with French white tips, the one stroke hot neon pink and white flowers. We got some swirl and iridescent Sawaski crystals. If you'd like to see how I did this one, continue watching. 
Hi everyone and welcome back to Nail of the Week. Excited to be doing another brand new look for the spring and this one's going to be more cute and girly. The last look was more romantic and beautiful and this one's going to be more girly and cute and adorable. I'm excited. So as you see I started it off as a angled French with white tips and kind of a uh, color that's like iridescent shifts color like pinks and blues and then we're going to be doing a one stroke flower with hot neon pink and white and then crystals and all that so let me go over and show you all the supplies so for starters I went with this funky fingers I got from five below and it's called mama mia and you can see the shifts in it it's got pink and blue in it it's gorgeous I use that first that's from Five Below, and then my white Kiss Gel that I got from Dollar Tree, and there's the numbers. Doesn't have a color anymore. It used to be called, I think, just white, but that's the numbers now. And it's a wonderful polish. I love those white and black from Five, uh, I'm sorry, from Dollar Tree. And then I dried everything up with the Sesh Feet Dry Fast Top Coat so that when I do the art, if I make a mistake, then I can go over and um, you know fix it without having to take off all the polish. So you always wanna have a top coat on, especially working with acrylic paints. If you're working with polish, then you're gonna have to take it all off, but um, you might be able to wipe it off if you have a top coat on, maybe even a couple, or couple, a couple top coats on, maybe you can wipe it off, but acrylic paints are easily wiped off with um, rubbing alcohol, so it'll wipe right off, or you can just use water. Um, but basically, the alcohol works better in a Q-tip. So I've left one finger open, though, because I'm going to show you how to do that French uh, angle that I did there. And then I'll be working, like I said, with acrylic paints. I've got a hot neon pink and a white, both by Apple Barrel, both from Walmart for 50 cents. There's the white. And I did mix in some white. You always want to mix white into your neons because they're so... Um, uh, see-through like you want to add the white to make it more opaque so I added in white and mixed it and then of course I'm going to need the white and then I'm going to be using this brush a flat brush you just need a flat brush when you're doing what's called the one stroke flower and I'll show you how to do that if you don't know what that is some of you will know and some of you may not I'll show you. you're going to be putting a color you know white on one side and pink on the other and then you blend them and then you do the stroke the flower I'll show you that I also will be probably working with Robin's brush. RobinMosesNailArt.com is how you order them. Or you can go to her uh, YouTube page, Robin Moses, and it's linked down in her box. This one is called The Wand, and she has the unicorn. There it is there. This is the liner, and the uh, unicorn is called The Striper. And it's beautiful. It's red sable hair. She had them designed, and uh, they are $10 a piece or $18 for both. And the shipping is wonderful. Definitely order her brushes. They're great. I might need that brush. Because uh, I might be doing a little bit of swirls and stuff in there. So, and then I'll be working with crystals. I want crystals on my nails this time. So I'm going to be doing those iridescent because I did iridescent for the background color. Sorry if I have a little bit of paint around. I'll clean all that up. But those little tiny, tiny stones, I believe they are a 6SS, I believe, or smaller. They're very tiny. I got them on Amazon, off of Amazon. And then I will glue them down with the ASP glue. After I get the flowers in, I'll be using an orange wood stick to put them on. And then we will top everything off at the end with another coat of the Sesh Feet Dry Fast Top Coat I get from Amazon, or you can get it from Sally's or Walmart. So I am going to get set up here and get ready to show you guys this angled French white part first, and then we'll go on to the flowers. All right, I've got these beautiful one-stroke flowers on. Aren't these gorgeous? They give you the feel of kind of like a Hawaiian lei. I love them. Aren't they beautiful? And then we're going to put the crystals in the center. Now, we're not doing a full flower going all the way around. I'm just kind of doing it halfway, but I'll show you how I am doing this. All right, we're going to draw in. Here is my palette. I've got the brush. I'm going to clean it off here because I want to start fresh with this brush because I had a lot of paint on it. So here's your brush. It's nice and flat. You want to make sure it's flat, okay? And you're going to dip one side into the pink. So I'll show you when I dip it. See how it's just on one side? And then you're going to dip the white on the other side. So then it's got pink and white. You see that? And then you're going to go to your palette here and just go like this and kind of be mixing the color. You want to go like that each side, then dip again and again and again. Go to your palette because you want to fill up your brush. It's filling your brush up. Okay. Then we'll come onto the finger here. I, I did have to wipe it off and redo it for you guys. I was trying something out. But you set the brush down. I'm going to angle it first going this way. Set it down and you just start to sway up and down, up and down. And that's how the color swirls like that. And then we'll go to the next petal. Go up a little higher with it. 
Same thing, just swaying back and forth, and you'll see you'll get more white to some, more pink to some. As your brush is emptying out, you wanna get more paint. This is an old brush, I really need to get a new brush. When this was first new, it really could do this good. Keep the white to the top, pink to the center, unless you want it opposite. Do it again, be swaying. See how some will just leave the pink at the bottom? And then you can go back through ones that you've, you know, kinda messed up a little bit. You can go right back through it. And I'm gonna fill up a little bit more paint. Like I said, this brush is really an old brush, but it's still working. Whoops, turn it around so we get the white at the top. And sway again, swaying the flower in. You're just swaying that in. And I really wish I had a better brush. I noticed that this one wasn't, I mean, it's still beautiful, but I really wanted to have a good brush for this, but that's okay, I'll, I'll get one. So but I'm gonna go back through now where I missed and some spots that I missed and just kind of tap it in. Over here, I'm just gonna tap in some more pink, just tapping it in. You can just tap it where you have some open spots. But there you go. Isn't that so pretty, you guys? I love these. I think they're so pretty and just so Hawaiian-like. It really gives me kind of a, a Hawaiian feel. All right, so that's how you do the one stroke. And there's another way you can tap it on too. I've seen people tap it on, but I like the sway motion because I like how it mixes. We're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna put our crystals in. I'll be back. Okay, I decided to do some swirls and dots. I just think it made it look a little bit fancier. So we're gonna do that first before the crystals. Isn't that pretty, you guys? I don't, I don't know, I just think it makes it look even more girly. So we're gonna just dip in and get a little bit of white. Okay, I paint all over my fingers. Then just start into the flower and come up and just kind of sway your brush and go around in a circle and make a little loop here, a little swirl, okay. And you want very little paint on your brush. And then we'll come over here and we'll add one in over here. Okay, start right in where the flower is and just come up and we'll bring this one around this way. And you can just, you know, take your, lift your brush up and uh, do the swirl or whatever. And then you can go over it again. This one was losing a little bit of paint. I did water this down. The more you water it down, well, not the more, but when it's watered down, it just works better. It just goes on easier. So we'll fix this one here. It was kind of getting a little messed up. And just go around like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is art, so you don't need it to be perfect. I'm gonna go around this one and fix this one a little bit. You can always fix things like that. Okay, I'll draw in a little bit more for you. And then what I'm gonna do is put some dots. I'll do the dots on this side just to kind of cover up my little bit of mistake there. All right, we'll just do three there. And then this one will come up around this way with the dots. And as I go along, I just make them smaller and smaller like that. Isn't that pretty? I don't know, I just think it gave it more of an a girly, elegant look. I really did, or more of a cute, girly look. I just think it looks really, really cute like that and precious. All right, now we're gonna add in the rhinestones. I'm gonna do that and I will return. Okay, look at these. Look at those crystals in there. Isn't that pretty, you guys? Oh my gosh, I love these, so girly. And there's the thumbs, and I did leave one finger open to show you. Now, we're not putting them in in a perfect circle or anything, I just like the way that they're just going in. So I've got some glue on a cap here, I've just got a little bit there. I'm just dipping my orange wood stick and putting some glue just right in the center of that flower. And then we've got the stones right there. So I'm just gonna reach in, let's slide this over a little bit, and just pull out stones and just set them down. Make sure that they're turned the right way so they don't fog in the glue, because they will fog, and just set them however randomly you wanna set them. And if you don't have rhinestones, you can also just put glitter in the middle of these. These would be pretty with just glitter in the middle to get the sparkle. Some people don't like stones, because they don't like the feeling of feeling that, you know, uh, lift or whatever, like a 3D. They don't like that feeling where you can actually feel that. So if you don't like it, then just put glitter in the middle. That would be very pretty too. Or you can leave them without anything. You don't even have to put it. You could also do micro beads. Micro beads would be very, very beautiful with this look. And I'm just gonna do one more down in the corner there. I kind of just look at them and I feel it out and see what I think would look good. So just like that. Oh my gosh, I love it, you guys. You know me and my bling and sparkle. I love it and my girly looks, I really do. Aren't these just stunning and beautiful? 
love the look of these and I love French white tips. But just to keep them nice and French white, I am gonna go over, uh, like I said, with that yellow stopper. But first I'm gonna do the sesh feet. You have to do that first, dry everything up, and then you would use the yellow stopper and let that dry solid. It will be kind of tacky feeling for a while, like rubbery feeling. But then by the next day, everything smooths down or like hours later, it'll smooth down. But don't worry about that tacky feeling. It keeps them nice, bright, and white if you have a problem with uh, yellowing when you have white, you know, white nails. So I'm going to put the dry fast top coat on and then the yellow stopper and I'll return to show all of you guys the end product. Alrighty, everyone, I am all done. And aren't these just darling? They are definitely more girly and just more cute. I really love the one stroke flowers. I love the way they turned out. I love the idea that I did put the swirls and the little dots through it. And of course, the iridescent Sawaski crystals. I think this design is just adorable and very girly like. And I love that background too. You know, when you're doing a French tip, normally I just do like a sheer pink. But I like how I did that color that's kind of an iridescent as well, where the color shifts. And you'll see in photos, this is so bright and pretty. It's not showing the true color here. It still kind of shows it, but wait till you see the photos. They're really bright and beautiful. Love the way they turned out. There's the thumbs. And each one is done a little bit different, so I really do love the way these turned out. And I hope you guys do too. Definitely give them a try. Again, do it on paper first or on a cap, trying the one-stroke flower, and get yourself a good brush. I need to get myself a new one. That one wasn't in good shape. But anyways, I hope everyone is staying healthy, happy, and safe, and God bless all.